Listen to every listener, to every saint of God, I want to leave a message with you. Don't give up on your aspirations and your dreams. Keep your hope. Most of all, keep your faith. I want to remind you that if God has promised you something, hold on, believe, and don't doubt. And surely it will come to pass. Whether you know it or not, your blessing is right here and right now. God is knocking on your door. Open your door and receive everything that God has for you. Be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, you Lord. I just 
just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. And I just want to thank you, Lord. There's another little portion of a verse that goes something like this. You made, uh, you made a way for me. You made a way for me. You made a way for me. And I just want to thank you, Lord. Greetings to you, my brothers and sisters. Certainly it is a pleasure once again, um, a privilege to be before you in this hour, in particular this day and time, this time that we're living in. I am honored that you uh, tune in to this channel, and we're so gracious um, and so thankful that you have embraced and continue to embrace this ministry. Uh, the last few weeks, or should I say month, we've been um, teaching from the book of Revelation. And of course, the Gospels, uh, Matthew and Mark. And we have even indulged into the Old Testament writing of the prophet Daniel, Zechariah, just to name a few, Jeremiah. Uh, but as we come upon a very special week of celebration here, in America in particular, I thought it would be uh, pleasing. I thought it would be thoughtful to uh, just give thanks to recognition to God our Father. And I think with all the things that's going on in the world today, certainly we ought to set our hearts and our affections to be more gracious. We should show more gratitudes. We should be more thankful because certainly the power of death and life comes directly from God. In other words, he has the last so. And certainly we're living in a uh, turbulent time and in a turbulent hour, and yet the Bible forecasts that things are to become worse. Now, there are two holidays in a calendar year that most uh, families and most people celebrate. Uh, here in America, it doesn't matter about the race, creed, or color. They all, all people come together, pretty much so. Most of them come together and will celebrate the holiday Thanksgiving and also the Christmas holiday. This time of the year and these two particular holidays can bring about many reflections. Sometimes uh, 
We may be caught in our mindset to reflect on the things that have not gone the way we thought they should have. Yet there is a mindset that reflects on losing loved ones. But I wonder how many of us, in spite of what has happened this year, in the year of 2020, are yet hanging on and giving glory and thanks to God, our Father. These two particular holidays at this time of year, in a lot of instances, has brought a lot of tears. Yet and still, there is the embracing of the happy moments that we spend with our families and our loved ones. This particular year, 2020, has been uh, a rather harsh year to many of us and to many families. This has been an unusual year of struggles for many, and yet there has been a perplexing, deadly virus that has been rampant, destroying, causing death to over 200 and 54,000 people here in the United States alone. And from that virus itself, it has been over 12 million people in this world that has succumbed to this deadly virus called COVID-19. Yet in the midst of the struggles, the fight against this COVID virus, racial tension, and we also have many people that are out in the streets that don't have housing and proper care and, and toiletries, no place to go, yet in spite of all the things that it appears and, and we may be encountering and suffering, it is still a time of reflection. It is a time of reflection, looking into the mirror, seeing just how blessed we are. Seeing how blessed we are yet being in the land of the living. I wish I could get some help right there. The mirror image may not reflect the best you as you may want it to appear, but looking into the mirror, the mirror image is a reflection of a living soul. If you're able to look into the mirror, See yourself regardless to what you, uh, uh, what, what appears before you. The fact of it is, is that you are able to look into the mirror and have the reflection of whatever is standing before it. Can I get a witness here? But the mirror image is a reflection that you're able to breathe and that you're yet breathing. And if you're able to look in the mirror, if you're looking into the mirror, it also means that you're able to see. Most of us are able to walk, able to maneuver, able to hear, and able to get from here to there. It may not be as it once was. Hallelujah. It may not look like it once looked. We may not look like we once looked. We may not walk like we used to. 
Our hearing may be impaired. The body incapacitated in some shape or form. Yet, the mirror image still shows God's mercy and his love. I wonder if I can get a witness there. Uh, my brothers and sisters, this Thanksgiving, uh, because of the virus and <coughs> all of the things that we're dealing with here and now, this particular Thanksgiving here in 2020, you may not, you and I may not be able to fellowship with our families, in particular if they are in distance. We, ne we may not be able to fellowship with our families and our loved ones as the norm or as usual. For this virus has caused a rerouting. This, this virus has caused us to navigate in a different direction. This virus has caused us to restructure or to organize differently. I wonder if I can get an amen. Therefore, our priorities has been redirected and caused all of us to refocus on this life as we now know it. It has brought many humbling experiences. Now, I'm talking about this year in particular because I've never experienced a year in my lifetime such as now. And I know many of you all can testify to that fact. But this year itself has brought many humbling experiences. It is time now to reflect, my brothers and sisters, on the goodness of God. Many may ask and many might say, how can we say that God is good and his mercy endureth forever? How is it that you can fix your mouth to say that God is good? How can you say that God is merciful when I have lost loved ones this year? How can you say and how can you form the opinion to say that it is God's mercy and that he is merciful to all of us? How is it that you can say that? Yet for all of the years that we have been acquainted with the fellowship of Christianity and the word of God. We've heard that healing was the children's bread. And yet many of our loved ones have gone on and have succumbed to what is called this COVID-19 virus. We were fasting and praying. Many of you all are saying that we were fasting and praying for our loved ones. We were fasting and praying that God would do the miraculous. My brothers and sisters, yet and still, in spite of all the pain and the tragedies and the suffering the things, the catastrophical things that you have gone through this year. I still say that it is a time as we embark upon this Thanksgiving holiday, I still say regardless to what has happened in the past, in this year, I still say, that it is a time to reflect on the goodness of God. How can you say that, Reverend? I can say that because I'll take you to the scripture that I often read. And that is Psalm, 
the Jewish hymn book, the book of Psalm, the 136th chapter. If you would turn with me, maybe this particular chapter will enlighten your heart, lift the load, the heavy burdens off of the heart and the mind then you'll understand that in this chapter, as we read, that God is a sovereign God. The book of Psalms, chapter 136, verse number 1, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Listen at the next part of this. For his mercy Endure it forever. Why should we continue to give thanks to God when you've lost all that you had? Foreclosures, repossession, all the things that may have happened to you. Verse 2. Oh, give thanks unto the God of the gods. Give thanks to the God of gods. For his mercy endureth forever. Verse 3. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords. Listen. For his mercy endureth forever. To him who alone doeth great wonders. For his mercy endureth forever to him that by wisdom may listen the heavens for his mercy I'm talking about God yet endure it forever let me read that again to him that by wisdom made eh, the heavens for his mercy endure it forever. Verse 6. To him that stretched out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endure it forever. To him that made great lights, yet and still, listen, his mercy Endure it forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endure it forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endure it forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for his mercy endure it forever. And brought out Israel from among them. For his mercy uh, endure it forever. Uh, with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm. For his mercy. Endure it forever. I'm going to read this whole chapter. To him which divided the Red Sea into parts, for his mercy endure it forever. And made Israel to pass through the midst of it, for his mercy endure it forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Again, for his mercy endure it forever. To him which led his people through the wilderness, for his mercy endure it forever. To him which smote great kings for his mercy endureth forever. 
and slew famous kings. Listen at this word. For his mercy endureth forever. And Og, the king of Basham, for his mercy endureth forever. And gave their land for inheritance, for inheritance, for his mercy endureth forever. Even heritage unto Israel, his servant, for his mercy endure it forever. Who remembered us, listen here, this is you and I, who remembered us in our low estate mm. for his mercy endure it forever. Let me read that 23rd verse again. Who remembered us in our low estates. Who remembered us in trying times. Who remembered us in our low moments. Who remembered us when we were downtrodden. Who remembered us who was burdened. Who remembered us who was in the valley. Who remembered us who many a night rolled in tears. The pillow was full of tears. Verse 23 said, Who remembered us in our low estate for his mercy endureth forever and had redeemed us from our enemies for his mercy endureth forever. Verse 25 Who giveth food to all flesh. God is our provider. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endureth forever. The final verse of this particular chapter is the subject of today's message. Oh, give thanks unto God. Oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. His mercy endureth forever. In spite of where you may be at, maybe in a low moment, a low place, in spite of reflecting on what you have lost, in spite of reflecting on The low moments are the lonely moments. I'll come by to tell you today that this is the hour that you are to give thanks unto God for his mercy endureth forever. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I just wanted to come for this period of time to give you the thoughts to remind you that during this holiday season, I want to remind you to stay safe, be safe. You may not be able to fellowship with your loved ones, but this is an hour that you must use common sense. I know many of you said, well, God, my God shall protect me. Yes, he will. But the same God is also the God that give wisdom to leadership and to doctors. The Bible says, obey the rules of the land, the laws of the land. And if the doctors are saying that we are to wear masks, that we are to shield ourselves, to protect ourselves in whatever way that we can from this virus, my brothers and sisters, I want you to be encouraged to take heed and to do so. For our God, he's a sovereign God. And his mercy endureth forever. So, oh, give thanks. 
This is the season that we should relish, that we should, should cherish this moment, these times in our one-on-one one -on -one relationship with God. This is, our, this is the hour that you can get to know him one-on-one -on -one. in the midst of the turmoil, in the midst of darkness. God is the marvelous light. The reflection that you see from the mirror is not about how much you feel like you have aged or decayed or maybe decapacitated in some type of way. But the reflection is that God's mercy endureth forever. If you're able to stand or to sit and look at yourself or anybody else, just know that it's the mercy of God that you're yet here. Therefore, we give thanks unto God in this season. God bless you. Until next time, you be safe. Hopefully, we'll see you next week. God bless you. You pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I've got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I've got my war clothes on in the army. War clothes on in the army of the Lord. I've got my war clothes on. Put those hands together. Let's have some church. Put your feet down.